All right, guys, we thought that we would uh, give you a little short video to explain uh, the steel drum band program that we're going to get started. Really excited. We're going to be doing some outdoor gigs with the jazz band this year. Uh, and Mr. Naughton is going to be directing the steel band. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what all is involved with that, I'm going to let Mr. Naughton uh, demonstrate some of the drums. So here is Mr. Naughton. Thank you, Mr. Eubanks. How's everybody doing? I want to uh, just let you know, first off, I'm really excited about doing this. I want to tell you just a little bit about my experience in, on top of being a band director for 30 years. About 17 years ago, I uh, started with the Milton High School Band, and they said, by the way, one of your responsibilities is steel drums. Well, I didn't know anything about steel drums, so I literally sat in the front of the rim and watched everybody play really, really well and said, man, that's really good. Uh, and then slowly, I started to learn from there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pans themselves, but I've been doing this now off and on for 17 years. I have played every pan, although I'm not, I don't have a lot of repertoire for all of them, but we're going to talk about the pans we have here at Sequoia. First off, I'm going to talk a little bit about the drums themselves. Uh, we have our, our tenor pan, which is the lead pan, only has one drum, it has about 30 notes, 30, 30, 32 notes on the inside of it. And the thing about it is that they're arranged in fifths, so as you go around the drum, you'll notice it, it, it's not like a typical chromatic setup. And this is an upper octave. And then the highest octave, which you almost have to have a harder mallet for. We don't use those notes a lot, but they're there for, for available. But this is called a tenor pan, or we refer to it as a lead pan. It has a lot of the melody. And then this is over here is the double tenor pan, which shares melody and um, and uh, accompaniment, chordal accompaniment at times. We also have what's called a double second, which I don't have. We have two double seconds with this. We have two double tenors, two double seconds. Double seconds kind of a double um, lead and harmonies at times. But here's just an example of just, and in this pan, the, the notes are bigger. So you have as many notes as you have down here, but because they're bigger and deeper sounding, you have a wider range, so you have to have the two pans. So just a little bit of a typical chordal will come to be something like this. kids. They love Under the Sea from Little Mermaid. Here's just a little sample of what would be like on this. Sounds like a little bit like this. So that was actually a, a fan favorite of ours, and people always loved when we did that at, at, my, at my old school with Flowery Branch. So that's the lead pan. We actually have the availability of five players to play lead pans. This pan, and this pan, and the double second read in treble clef. So if you're a player that plays a treble clef instrument, this would be an easy translation for you. Now over here, we have what are called the triple cellos, and with the, these are the sequoia drums, which by the way, thank you Mr. Eubanks, we just spent about $1,200 on having all these things tuned up. So your care of these is of utmost importance, because they can go out of tune, they're tuned by hammering, they can also be taken out of tune by hammering, and the guy who tuned them was actually taught by uh, the person who invented the steel drum, a man named Ellie Manette. Look, look that name up and you'll find he is the inventor of the steel drum. He just passed away last year. Um, but he was from Trinidad. But this is what knows the triple cellos. We have a long skirted triple cello, which is, which is this, and we have a short skirted triple cello, which are three drums that are done on hangers like you see here. But while I don't have a melody here, you get an idea. Bigger pans, lower voices. Um, there's uh, only a few notes per drum, but you can hear the, the deeper sound. <laughs> And they have an upper octave as well on the inside. Alright, and these drums. 
drums did not sound like this until about a week ago. So um, these are these are the triple cello pans. Um, we'll have to have two players. They, they read in bass clef. You might be a player who's interested in learning how to read bass clef a little bit better, or um, you've already played bass clef and can play these drums uh, and just look for the notes. Okay. The, the last group we have is are called the six bass. We only have one set of these. Um, these are your bass pans. Uh, some of you have seen these hanging out in the room up there. Um, they only have three notes apiece. They're very deep in their sound. Uh, uh, they, the triple cello will sometimes couple bass parts, and we also have a bass guitar in the band that will couple these drums. So you have uh, three notes per drum. These are just your F, B flat drum. Your D and A drum. C, G drum. E natural, B natural drum. because if you get good at this, you look like you're really working hard. Uh, one of my favorite bass lines uh, that we've done, that I've done several times, that I can demonstrate, hopefully, is from Axel F. Uh, if you know the piece at all, go watch Beverly Hills Cop. Don't tell me I told you to do that because it's a rated R movie, but we'll go with that. But anyway, so here's the bass part. Hopefully, I'll pull this off. We have what's called the spin move in it. So here's the bass part from Axel F. <laughs> Cantina band from Star Wars. Uh, it's a really, really fun arrangement. And uh, like I said, some um, uh, some uh, Caribbean style music. So we're going to hit all genres of music with this, uh, depending on how, how much time we can get going. Now, how many people does it take to be in the steel band? Well, we have pans for 12 players, plus we need a drum set drummer and a bass player. Mr. Eubanks and I have talked about the possibility of running two, two groups. Now, I don't have to have all the drums to have a secondary group. We can have a smaller group as a second group. And um, we'll find out those rehearsal times. But right now, we're going to start, uh, start rehearsal on Monday, January 11th. And we'll simply bring everybody in for that and try the different drums and learn Jump in the Line, which is a Harry Belafonte tune. Pretty easy. Takes three chords. And we'll see how we do on that. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you this. Why would you want to do something like the Steel Band? Number one, because I'm pretty sure there's no other school in Cherokee County that has one. Number two, it will be one of the premier ensembles of this school that will be well known in the Woodstock Canton community. And, and, and very unique. I can guarantee you get word out about this group, you will be asked to play gig after gig after gig. And we might start making some money for the band so we can start giving the Flowery Branch drums back and expanding our own set of drums. And they cost a little bit. Each drum here costs anywhere from $800 to $1,500. A set of six bases is probably around three thousand dollars. So this drum here is around nine hundred bucks. Um, so, um, so some other reasons to do this. It's a great enrichment ensemble to help, and it also helps like for wind players. Wind players are invited to do this, and it helps rhythmically. You want to talk about having to do rhythms that you don't normally do on your instrument? You would have to do them on here and be able to understand the pockets between beats of this. This would be a great opportunity for you to do this, and. This has some history to it. Your, your former director, uh, uh, Mr. Harrison, um, who we all loved in the, in the band director community, started this, uh, this uh, unique ensemble several years ago, and it's been dormant for a while. So we would like to start this. We would like to start this and kind of revive this, partly for the tradition of Sequoia High School and partly in his memory and tradition that, that he started so many years ago. So, we're going to leave you today with a video of, we're going to leave you today with a video from my ensemble who performed at GMEA. We actually had a combination of two sets of drums, so we had something like close to 30 players on stage in Savannah, Georgia in 2012. And I think you'll really enjoy it, and that will be a, a, an example of the type of ensemble you'll be a part of. I really am very excited about getting this cranked up. And um, I was excited about having the drums in my house the other day getting hammered on. And uh, we are so grateful for all the players that have signed up so far. We want to invite all of you to be a part of it. It's going to be a fantastic 2021. So as we say goodbye to 2020, 
hello to the Chiefs of Steel, Steel Drum Band, and we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Peace out.